Hello, so I forgot that yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, so I'm celebrating it today, and I thought that I would read a leprechaun story. Are you ready? This is called Tim O'Toole and the Wee Folk. It's a tale that was told and illustrated by Gerald McDermott. That means he wrote it and he drew the pictures. Aren't they funny? All right, here we go. Tim O'Toole and the Wee Folk. Here we go. I can get so you can see the pictures. In a little cottage on a little hill at the end of a little lane in Donegal lived Tim O'Toole and his wife Kathleen. Tim and Kate were so poor that they had not a penny or a potato between them. Their children ate porridge for supper. Do you know what porridge was? That was like what the three bears ate. It's kind of like oatmeal. Even the mice were thin from want of food and the cat wouldn't bother with chasing. Their neighbors were poor enough themselves. Uh, they avoided Tim, for they thought he would bring them bad luck. Things went from bad to worse, until one day there was not a crumb or a drop left in the house. Tim O'Toole, said Kate, I can stand no more of this poor, and you sitting around bemoaning your fate. That means he was moaning and groaning. You must go and find work like a decent man and take us out of this poverty. Kathleen kept after him, and next morning, Tim set out to see if he could earn some wages. Tim O'Toole traveled the length of the country, knocking at every door, inquiring at every farm, trying to eke out a few coppers, that means coins, for a day's work. But there was no work to be had. Finally, when Tim was tired and hungry and could walk no further, he stopped and lay down to rest in the cool green clover at the side of the road. No sooner had he stretched out than he heard the faint sounds of merry piping and lilting voices raised in song and laughter. The strange music was coming from a little hollow in the side of the hill. Tim crept up to the hollow and he peeked over the edge. There below him was a troop of the wee folk laughing and singing and carrying on. Well, Tim knew for sure his luck had changed, for it is well known that whoever spies the wee folk in the light of the day can demand their treasure. Who are the wee folk? That's right, they're the leprechauns. Suddenly, the music stopped. The little merrymakers were astonished when they looked up and saw Tim peering down at them. Hand over your gold, bellowed Tom and trying to be fierce, and you'll come to no harm. Oh, have mercy on us, Tim O'Toole, begged the leader of the little people. There was a smile on his lips and he tried not to laugh. You've caught us, uh, you've caught us fair and square, so we'll see that we'll, you're richly rewarded. Then there was hurrying and scurrying in the hollow below, and soon the folk handed up a little gray goose. Here you are, Tim, a goose that lays golden eggs. Go home straight away, tell not a soul, and you and your Kate shall never want for more. Do you see that goose? Tim started for home, carrying the goose and feeling very pleased with himself. Soon darkness overcame him, and he stopped at a farmhouse to ask if he could stay the night. The couple who owned the farm, the Magoons, let him in and sat down by the fire. Tim began to boast and brag of his great good fortune in the little gray goose that lays golden eggs. That night, while Tim was asleep in the loft, the Magoons decided that such a goose, that they could use such a goose as this. Quietly, they exchanged it for their own. Tim was none the wiser, for in the morning went ha home, happily homeward, carrying the goose he thought would bring him great wealth. When he got home, he put the bird upon the table. Is this all you've got to show for being gone these three days? asked Kathleen. But darling, this is no ordinary goose, said Tim. This one lays golden eggs. Well, the short of it is, they waited a long, long time, and as you might guess, the goose did no such thing. They've cheated me, howled Tim, and marched off in a temper to give the little people what for. When he finally reached their hiding place, he was still angry. 
Golden eggs, is it? cried Tim to the wee folk. That goose you gave me laid no eggs at all. Hmm, this is curious indeed, said their startled leader. Then the little man winked his nose and gave a sly smile. Tim, wait for a moment and we'll make good your reward. Can you see the pictures? It's a little bit tricky, the lighting. There was hurrying and scurrying in the hollow below. A moment later, the wee folk brought forth a fine linen tablecloth and spread it in front of Tim. In the wink of an eye, it was covered with bounteous food. That means a lot of food. And drinks, the likes of which he had never seen before. Take this tablecloth to home straight away to Motul and tell not a soul, cautioned the leader of the little ones. Then, you and your darling Kate shall never want for more. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen now. Okay, so here's a little picture. That's the first one. And that's the second one. Uh-oh. I think we know what's happening. Tim walked merrily toward home until darkness came on him. Again, he stayed with the, the night with the Magoons and boasted to them of his newfound fortune. The Magoons thought it was good fortune indeed. While Tim slept, they slipped away the magic tablecloth and exchanged it for an ordinary one from their very own cupboard. Tim was none the wiser for it when he reached home the next day. Kathleen, my darling, he said, we'll never go hungry again. And with a flourish, he spread the tablecloth upon the table. Well, of course, it was empty and produced not a drop or a crumb. Kathleen laughed. Tim went into a rage. Oh, the little heathens, he shouted. In a flash, Tim was out the door and on the road again. I wonder where he's going. He's so angry. Stand fast, Tim called down into the little hollow where the wee folk were gathered. Tis pleased you are not, Tim O'Toole, said the leader. Could it be that the tablecloth was empty? All the wee folk were grinning. Indeed it was, you scoundrel, announced, answered Tom, Tim. The wee ones began to chuckle. <laughs> and did you go direct home as we told you? Tim O'Toole admitted. He had t twice stayed the night at the Magoons. When they heard this, the little people burst into laughter. You are a fool to trust the likes of the Magoons, said the leader. But never mind, Tim. We've just the thing for you. The little people brought up a strange green hat and gave it to Tim. They instructed him to boast of its magic to the Magoons and to leave the hat where they could find it. Then we shall see what we shall see, said the wee one. Do you see that hat? Looks like a normal hat, doesn't it? A third time. Here's the picture. A third time. Tim tarried at the Magoons. He, he proudly displayed the magic hat that the wee folk had given him. Then he crawled up into the loft and pretended to be asleep. He had but laid his head upon the straw when he heard the Magoons start below. I wonder what sort of magic it is, said Magoon to his wife. Cautiously, he tipped over the hat. And what do you think is going to happen? What do you think it's going to be? Let's see. Out of the hat jumped ten tiny men. Do you see the pictures? Here you go. Out of the hat jumped ten tiny men. Each had a little black thorn club and began to beat the magoons until the, about the shins and the ankles. The couple whooped and hollered and danced around the room, trying to escape the blows of the wee folk. Lay off, lay off, begged Magoon. Tell your henchmen to have mercy, O'Toole. Give me my linen tablecloth and my little gray goose and I'll leave you in peace, said Tim, laughing all the while. Hmm, I think the magoons are getting what they deserved. The Magoons gave back what they had taken. Tim put on his hat, tucked the little gray goose under one arm, draped the tablecloth over the other, and headed for home. When Tim arrived, he spread the tablecloth before Kathleen and set down, in the, set down the golden goose in the middle of it. The bird honked and laid a golden egg. Then the most delectable eatables and drinkables began magically to appear on the table. Kathleen, my darling, said Tim, we are happy at last. Or so Tom thought. Oh no, what could possibly happen now?
Uh oh. Well, folks from all parts soon heard of to O'Toole's good fortune and crowded in to see the wondrous goose. Their little cottage filled up with neighbors until there was no place left to sit or stand. Everyone helped themselves to the never ending supply of eatables and drinkables. I never knew we had so many friends, said Tim, but I think it's time the party was at an end. Tim tipped his hat and out jumped ten tiny men with black thorn clubs and they beat the shins and ankles of the cr noisy crowd, chased them out of the house and pursued them down the hill. Look at that. Oh my goodness. After that, the cottage was quiet once again. Tim O'Toole and his family were quite comfortable, you might say. They spent many hours in front of the hearth, sipping hot tea and chatting, thinking kind thoughts of the wee folk. For all I know, Tim and Kate are there still in a little cottage on a little hill at the end of a lane in Donegal. They look so happy, don't they? It's a big difference from the first page. And happy St. Patrick's Day. There's some wee folk. Did you like that story? I really like the part when they tricked the magoons. 